This Tech Channel video is brought to you by our Tech Channel partner, JLC PCB. JLC PCB is a perfect solution to make your PCB board ideas a reality. Hey friends, welcome to Flight Test Tech. I'm Josh. Today we're going to be showing you how to build the FT Easy 262 that is modeled after an ME 262. Now this is one third of our FT Easy 3 Jet series. So along with this, you'll also be getting in your kit the FT Easy Stealth, the FT Easy Hornet, this FT Easy ME 262. The first thing we're going to want to do is pop out all of our pieces. We'll identify them and we'll get them building. We have all the pieces popped out that we need for our FT Easy ME 262. Let's go ahead and identify them. We have our left and right wing. We have the engine nacelles, we have our back tail, and then we have the two side doublers for our main fuselage piece. You're also gonna notice included in our kit is a barbecue skewer. This is gonna give us the rigidity we need on the back side of our fuselage so we can keep the airframe light but very strong. Now to keep this light, we're gonna peel all the paper that you see that's brown off of these planes. Let's go ahead and do that step now. Now that we have all of our pieces peeled, let's go ahead and put our attention towards the main wings first. First thing we want to do with our main wings is to join the middle. We're going to just take a piece of tape, we're going to press that right down the middle, like you see here. Just going to cut off any extra. Now that our wing halves are joined, we're going to establish what we call dihedral. Dihedral is going to give us the ability for the plane to self-level on its own. It works by having the lower wing generating more lift than the upper wing. So to establish the proper angle of dihedral, we're just simply going to take one of our nacelles as a gauge and we're going to hold this down nice and flat here. We're going to kind of lift this up until the wing doesn't bow or fight against that angle. That looks perfect right there. Once we're happy with that, we can take our hot glue gun, put a small light bead of glue right down the seam, put our piece back on, now we'll just take a scrap piece of foam and wipe off the excess. Give this about 30 seconds to dry before moving on to the next step. <laughs> Alright, so we have the dihedral established. Let's go ahead and put this aside and put our attention towards our fuselage. The first piece we're going to be working on is the center section of the fuselage and also our barbecue skewer right here. We want to press our barbecue skewer down and we're going to mark this just at the very end and we can simply crack it. Let's just do a quick test fit. Once we're happy with this, we're going to lay this flat on the table. We're going to keep a scrap piece of foam right next to us. I'm going to lay a thin bead of glue right over top. And then come back and squeegee it in. I'm now just going to hold that and kind of pinch it down right over top of this where I removed most of the glue, but the remaining glue is going to give me a nice solid glue joint between the barbecue skewer and the foam. We give us about 30, 40 seconds until the glue's fully dry. We're gonna flip over to the exact same process again on the other side. Again, I'm just putting my nozzle right over top of that barbecue skewer. Nice thin bead of glue. Scrap piece. Squeegee it down and hold it in place. All right, this is gonna give us a tremendous amount of rigidity on the very back of the tail here, and that's exactly what we need. I'm going to flip this over one more time, revealing the etch marks that is where our control board is going to go. We're going to find our one doubler now that has the piece cut out, and we're going to line this up just like this. Notice that the top of the nose all the way to the bottom, the lower portion of the fuselage that connects to the wing, and the back of the fuselage lines up perfectly. Once we're happy with that fit, we're going to flip this over, and we're going to place glue all around the perimeter. Don't have to get too crazy. I like to make sure I have plenty of glue right around where the battery is and also in the front nose. I'm going to flip this over one more time. Find our markings and line it up. There we go. And using the table as a friend, we're going to hold nice and flat for about 30 seconds. All right, one side's done. Let's go ahead and do the other. Same process as before. We're going to do a quick test fit, making sure that the battery slot lines up all around the front nose the back area, and the top. Once we're happy with that fit, we're going to flip this over and we're going to place glue all around the perimeter. We're going to flip this over one more time, find our markings and line it up. And using the table as our friend, we're going to hold nice and flat for about 30 seconds. All right, our fuselage is now done. Let's go ahead and do a quick test fit on the wing. We're simply going to line up this bottom tabs, hold it right over there, press it down in. 
When we press this against the wing, what you should notice is that the wing angle is equal on both sides. Make sure it looks just like this before you move on to the next step. You don't want one wing being flat and one wing being raised where your plane's gonna turn in one direction or the other. Once you're happy with the fit, we're gonna come back. I'm gonna put a bead of glue on both sides of the doublers. And again, we're gonna press this down into place. And we're gonna let this dry for about 30 seconds. Next, we're gonna position our elevator. Our elevator is gonna give us stability both horizontally, it's also gonna control our pitch. All we wanna do is we wanna line this up, and once we're happy with it, we're gonna put a bead of glue right down the center, slide it into place, and make sure that's perpendicular to our fuselage. There we go. Our final steps are to mount our two motor nacelles here. The shorter part of the nacelle is gonna to mount towards the front. I'm gonna use my barbecue skewer that's remaining and very lightly just kind of crush in on one side. This is gonna help us to keep the motor nacelles parallel with our fuselage. There's one. I'm just gonna put a piece of, a little bit of glue on the very top here. And I'm just gonna hold this nice and parallel to the fuselage while it dries. And then we'll do the same process on the other side. Gonna match the angle. Crush this down very lightly. A little bit of glue on the very top here. And I'm just gonna hold this nice and parallel to the fuselage while it dries. Now the airframe may be done, but there's one important step that we need to do next, and that's to check the proper center of gravity. To check the center of gravity, we're gonna put our fingers on the two dots that you see here. Now, if we don't have enough center nose weight, what you're gonna see is it's gonna be tail heavy. A tail heavy airplane simply is not gonna fly, and likewise, a nose heavy airplane is not gonna fly or fly well at all. So what we wanna do is we wanna use the included couple of nuts here that we have. To do this, we're simply gonna pop one or two or even more right into the battery slot like you see here. We can move our center of gravity back and forth to get the type of flight characteristics we want. Now keep in mind, if you're flying a free flight airplane or you're flying a powered airplane, you may have to adjust the center of gravity to make that plane fly properly. That looks perfect. All right, let's go ahead and take it out and see how she flies as a check lighter. So we're all set here. We have our center of gravity established. We have our angle on our tail, which is gonna give us the right amount of up. Again, every model is gonna be different. So if you need to move your nose weight forward or backwards, or even deflect the tail a little bit, that's okay. Uh, let's go ahead and see how she flies. Ready, Blake? Yeah. <laughs> all right, that's great. Yeah, a lot quicker than the stealth, huh? All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and move the CVD back just a little bit, make it a little bit more floaty. There it is. Perfect. All right, friends, we are all set to go here. Let's go back in the shop. We're gonna show you how to take this from a chuck lighter and make it ready to control. So this is our FT Easy Power Pack. Inside here, you're gonna have everything you need to take our Easy Series and make them go from a chuck lighter to an RC airplane. Let's show you what's inside. So what you see here is everything that you have inside of our FT Easy Two Channel Power Pack. You have your main transmitter, the control board that goes in the airplane. This is gonna give us our stabilization and also control the motors. We have our battery, our battery charger, our left and right motor, and we also include an extra set of props and a prop removal tool. This tool is really important if you wanna remove your props and not damage your motor. First thing we wanna do is we wanna put the battery on charge because this goes together so quickly that we don't wanna to have to wait on the battery charge. We want you to be able to go out and fly. To properly charge our batteries, the first thing we wanna do is we wanna plug our USB charger into the port. Once our charger is plugged in, we're then gonna connect our battery. Once we connect our battery, you'll notice that the red LED light on the charger goes on. When that charger finally goes off, that means that the battery is fully charged and you're ready to fly. Make sure you always unplug and replug in your charger between every charge to make sure that the little charge board has been reset. The first thing we want to do in putting our electronics in is we're going to remove our main control board from this holder here. All we need to do is simply pull this little tab and it'll pop out. We can throw this away or put it to the side, it's up to you. Now when we mount this, it's really important that we make sure we mount this in the right orientation and on the right side. This is the left side of the airplane. We're going to want to make sure that our battery lead is pointing towards the nose. We're gonna do a quick test fit here, make sure we're happy with where our control board is. Notice that the control board's gonna be all the way up towards the very top here, that way we can turn it on and off easily. 
and that the battery lead is gonna to point towards the nose. Before we put the control board on one final time, we're gonna install our motor leads. The motor with the R on it is gonna go on our right side, and the way that we decide on what is our right and left with a plane is if we're sitting in the cockpit pointing out towards the nose. So make sure that the airplane is orientated just like you see here, where the tail's close to your chest and the nose is pointing away. This will be your right side. I'm just gonna go ahead and remove this little tab, make this easier to, to pass through. And with the wire pass through, I'm gonna lay this right over its relief, just like you see here. I'm gonna take a little piece of tape and I'm gonna put a piece of tape down on each side of the wing. There's one. There we go. And then we'll pull that tight and wrap it around. This is gonna make the motor easy to pop from one plane to the other, but it's also gonna help the motor be nice and solid on the wing itself. Let's do the same process now on the other side. Click test fit. I like to push this all the way in the back to make sure we have it nice and perpendicular. I'm gonna take a little piece of tape and I'm gonna put a piece of tape down on each side of the wing. All right, now that we have both of our motors mounted, let's go ahead and mount our control board. Before we glue our control board in place, it's easiest to pass the little lead right through this tiny little slot like you see here. Use your fingernail and just pop it on through. Now we can apply two little drops of glue. And with the battery lead pointing towards the nose, you can press this up in place, just like you see here. Once your control board has been glued in, we'll match the white connector up with the white connector on the control board, line the pins up, same process on the next side. Motors only wanna go in one way, so if you feel like you're forcing it, most likely it's backwards. Anytime you have to remove your motors, make sure you don't just pull the wires. Make sure you either use your fingernail or a small flat blade screwdriver to push out from the connector. Now that our connections have been made, we can dress up the extra slack with a piece of tape. There's one. And there's two. All of the electronics that we need to fly this are now done. Our battery should be charged. Let's go ahead and get our battery and reestablish our center of gravity. To bind these together, the first thing we want to do is turn on our transmitter. Make sure our throttle is all the way down. You're going to notice a flash blinking red light. When we turn the controls onto our airplane, you're gonna see a slow flashing red light. To bind these, we simply need to take the throttle all the way to the top and then all the way back down to the bottom. At that point, both the light on the airframe and also the transmitter will now be solid. Now, when we give it a little throttle, the motor is gonna run for you. Now, to test our motors to make sure that everything is properly hooked up, we're gonna give it a little bit of throttle. And when we rotate to the right, you heard the right motor spool up. And when we rotated to the left, the left motor spooled up. Now we're gonna go ahead and check our direction. Perfect. What we felt there was absolutely correct. When we gave a little bit of throttle and we pushed the stick to the left, the right motor spooled up higher to give you a right turn. And then likewise, when we push it to the right, the left motor spooled up and give us a higher RPM, more thrust, turning us to the right. At this point, all we simply need to do is check our center of gravity, and the center of gravity looks great. We're ready to take this out and fly it. All right, friends, we are ready to fly our FT Easy ME262 here. Uh, a couple points of advice here. Now, one, just like the other models here, center of gravity is really important, and it will change based on whether you have it as a chuck lighter or already controlled. So you may want to find yourself moving it forwards or backwards to get the best kind of flight characteristics, and that will change with every model. Also, you may find yourself having to give it a little bit of up deflection in the back tail here. That's going to give you what you need uh, to be able to fly properly. So if it doesn't fly the first time you fly it, just remember, you always have to adjust for that. All right. If you haven't done also already, make sure you're in high rates. High rates is done by pushing the rate button one time. Make sure you have a little red flashing light. Let's see how she flies. There we go. <laughs> she flies great. So just like the other models, when you give throttle, she'll go up. And when you take away throttle, she'll go down here. A little bit of thermal there. Because we peeled the paper, this is much, much lighter. So you're gonna find that the climbing on these is much better than the original Easy 3s So you're gonna notice all the Jet Series are a little bit faster than our previous designs. That's because they're more of an advanced build and more of an advanced flyer, but they still fly incredibly easy. There we go. <laughs> Friends, I want to thank you for being part of the Flight Test family. Thank you for taking time to build with us and learn with us. Make sure you share what you've created and what you've learned from this curriculum. And we can't wait to see you in the next build. We'll see you next time.